Okay, as I mentioned in the, the last episode, I wanted to do a video on shotgun patterning and actually simulating the shot under duress. So here today we're gonna to talk about patterning your shotgun. And I don't wanna make it something complicated. I'm just gonna talk about some basics and fundamentals because you know, when you look at the shotgun, it can, you can talk about what gauge it is, you know, the length of the barrel, the uh, choke diameter, and you what shot you're using. Uh, what shell using two and three quarter three inch three and a half even the manufacturer so there's a lot of different things you can talk about there so i just want to narrow it down you've already you already have a shotgun so it's you your shotgun the shells you're currently using and the distance and what i want to do today is all we're going to do we're going to shoot three or four times probably three times i may shoot one additional time just for verification but at, we're going to shoot at 20 30 and 40. And I'm just thinking in my mind because I talked to a friend of mine who is a certified uh, skeet gun instructor. He said for skeet, they want a 21 inch pattern at 27 yards. Well, that's not good for turkey hunting. So we want ours to be a little more narrow. So I'm just gonna arbitrarily say, I'm gonna count the, the pellets within a 12 inch diameter on the target, okay? If I can get that on these targets. And then at the same time, I'm gonna see what the actual spread is from 20, 30, and 40, if we can derive that from the, 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 uh, the pattern that's on these uh, pieces of cardboard. So we're gonna work through this. Um, we'll try to make it as uh, interesting as possible. We don't want this video to be boring at all, but I think it's critical. You know, we put a lot of time and effort into practicing with our bows every year. You know, we take our rifles out to the rifle range and you know, shooting the shotgun is important too. So right now I'm just gonna go ahead. I've got my hearing protection here, uh, right here. You always need that. I've got that, I've got my shotgun and I've got a 12 gauge. I'm gonna use three and a half inch uh, turkey loads with four ounce shot. That's my preferred uh, shot size because of the down range energy. And I'm only gonna shoot out to 40 yards. I know these probably have a longer range, but you know, I wanna promote ethical hunting. So I'm gonna put a limit at 40 yards if we can. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. We'll take a few shots and hopefully this thing turns out the way I want it to turn out. Okay, from the next shot, it's gonna be at 30 yards. Uh, another advantage to patterning your shotgun gives you a good idea of how well you shoot. Now, I don't know about uh, anyone watching, but the last time I picked up my shotgun was last turkey season. So that in itself uh, creates a problem with how accurate you are. So it's really good to sit here, take your breath, because I think on that first shot, I forgot to let hold my breath. I think I was still breathing and it, it actually showed up on the pattern on the cardboard. So this time I'm gonna get, try to get in a groove and get in a routine and go through my shot plan. And I know obviously a lot of times when you're turkey hunting, it's difficult to do that because things are happening so fast. So this next shot at 30 yards, I'm gonna try to get in my breathing pattern, breathe in, let it out and then squeeze.
said it's the first time I shot the shotgun since uh, last turkey season. But I'm going to show you the, the targets. And here's another reason why you should go out and practice. It's just because you're a little rusty. You notice I've got some blocks here and I've got just a old cushion to shoot off of. Just give me something that's, uh, this is solid and it's adjustable. I've got some more wooden blocks, you know, some small two by sixes just to get that elevation right because you want to take as much degree of uh, difficulty out. You know, actually when you pattern the gun so you get a true pattern. So uh, I just bring a few blocks with me and a cushion. That way it gives something soft for the gun to rest on as well as not, you know, scratch it up. All right, so for the moment of truth and uh, not that great, uh, here is 20 yards. And my pattern is low because when I shoot at a turkey, I aim just below his head. I aim for the neck and the, the lower part of his head. That way, if he moves, all of your shot doesn't go over. So this looks really good. Okay, so we're going to go back. I'm going to put a ruler on this at 12 inches, and we'll see how many pellets we got in that group. So that one I'm happy with. Okay, the 30-yard, uh, something went wrong on this one. And I'm just showing you the, the, the live data, the real, the real data. You know, I'm not going to make 20 takes here and make this a Hollywood production. This is what really happened. So uh, still got some in the neck area, still got several in the head area. Now, if he didn't move, then I would harvest a bird. But look at this. Something happened. I don't know what happened, but my pattern, and obviously it's me, uh, probably where I haven't practiced is, you know, as I said earlier, I haven't shot my shotgun since last turkey season. So uh, not very happy with the 30 yard. Uh, still would have harvested the bird. Okay, and then for the last one. Uh, this is what I said was the maximum range that I recommend shooting. And I got started getting better, started getting more comfortable. So I've got a lot of pattern below it. And as you can see, as it goes further out, even though I'm aiming slightly lower than the turkey's head I still had some pattern over here now one thing I will notice is on the 30 and 40 it does appear that I'm shooting to the left so that's something I need to practice on so I need to go back and look at that but I have a lot of pellets in the head and a lot of pellets in the neck area so I'm really happy with the 40 something went wrong with the 30 now if you noticed on the 20 and the 30 I was having problems with uh, some gloves. These are some new gloves that I got and for the last shot I had to take them off. So I just found out while practicing, you know, not in the field, not when a moment of truth arises and you know the turkey's out there and you've done all your scouting, you know, you've done all your planning, you got your setup just right, you caught him just perfectly and he's coming right on in just like you diagram it. That's not the time you want to find out you can't shoot because of your glove. What was happening was I was getting double vision because the little thumb flap was in my line of sight of the target. So I've got both eyes open and I'm trying to look at the target and I'm picking up my thumb, the thumb flap on the glove. So I took it off in the last shot and uh, I think it made, it made a difference. I'm still, looks like pulling to the left. Uh, that's something I need to work on. But uh, this is a very good exercise for anyone that's uh, about to go turkey hunting. Uh, just don't take for granted that, you know, it's a shotgun, I'm gonna be throwing, you know, hundreds of pellets at this bird and I'm going to get it. Be comfortable with your shotgun. Uh, you need to understand what the performance is of it. And as I said earlier, you know, we spend a lot of time with our bows and we practice. I know I do. Uh, I've got a little routine. I practice every other day just like if I'm lifting weights, you know, to give my muscles time to rest. And I'm honing my skills, you know, I'm simulating, I'm, I'm shooting off my knee, whatever, you know, standing in a tree stand at home. So I'm doing everything I can to try to simulate the hunt. And that's why I wore those gloves, to try to simulate it. And uh, it's best if you can find out all of these little nuances or these little problems before you get in the woods. Because you don't want to find that out when you got a turkey within range and you're about ready to pull the trigger and you figure out, I can't see because of my thumb flap. But, you know, getting back to the gun, understand the performance of your gun. Uh, I know the NWTF recommends 40 yards or under. Uh, I know from experience, so uh, I have backed off that range. So if 
the load you're using, I recommend 45, 50 yards. If you pull that in 10 yards, you're just reassuring the fact that when the pellet hits the bird, now they, they recommend over two foot pounds of energy to penetrate the neck and hit the vertebrae or the head for a lethal kill. So you gotta have at least two pounds of energy when the, the, the pellet strikes the bird. So I pulled it in 10 yards, that's just me. That's my preference now, I wanna make sure. Plus you can look at it from this standpoint, when they're up closer, it makes it a little bit more exciting to watch. So um, I hope you enjoyed watching this uh, patterning that we did today. And uh, I would highly recommend that you go out and at least shoot three or four times with your shotgun. Just get familiar with the trigger, get fam familiar with the workings of the gun. So, and then put your gloves on, put your jacket on. It started getting a little cool here where I'm, I'm in the, obviously you can see I'm in the mountains, so I put my jacket on. Uh, wear ear protection when you're shooting. But uh, I would highly recommend that you go in and pattern your gun. That gives you more confidence when you go in and you hunt. And when you're, the turkey walks out, you can punch that tag. Okay, hopefully you can see this target here. This is the 20-yard uh, target. We're just going to re review it real quick. Uh, the overall pattern from the outside pellet to the outside pellet was 10 inches. So it was very dense at 20 yards, but you would expect that. Uh, when we looked at the total number of pellets inside the 12 inch zone that we said we were going to measure, 262 pellets roughly because uh, I did some research and based on the shell that I'm shooting there's about 270 pellets inside that shell. So what does that tell you? You've got a real dense pattern at 20 yards. It means if that turkey moves to the right or the left just over 5 inches, you're probably going to miss him. So, close in shots like this since the pattern is so dense you need to make sure you got a solid rest and probably shoot at a stationary bird now i'm not saying that you can't shoot at a um, moving bird but the odds or the likelihood unless you're just a super good shot of hitting a moving bird at 20 yards or close range is going to be less than it would be if it was further out okay so 10 inch pattern at 20 yards and then the next one is the 30 30 yard uh, target this one was an outlier i moved did something and uh, my pellets were predominantly on the outside here outside left uh, the overall pattern was 17 and a half inches so at 20 yards it was 10 and it grew to just over seven and a half at 30 yards so the pattern's gradually getting wider and i had 126 pellets in this, inside that 12 inch zone so we went from 262 down to 126 but this was a poor shot on my behalf. But as you can see, as the, as the pattern gets bigger, then you've got more of an opportunity to, to hit a bird with, the, with his head moving back and forth a little bit. Obviously, most of the time we can get them to call, and when they're looking, the heads are perfectly still almost, and you can shoot them that way. So pellets uh, were inside the 12 inch zone, were 126 on this one. And then the last target here, and real quick, I want to go over this. This was better. Still, though, my shot is just to the left, so that's something I've got to adjust on. But if you look at the 12-inch, again, 88 pellets are inside the 12-inch zone that we were talking about. And, and the reason why I'm using the 12-inch zone is because the turkey can move his head, like I was saying, on that 20-yard target to the left or right 5 inches on that 10-inch pattern, just outside 5 inches, and they're safe. You know, you're basically going to miss them. So now you've got a pattern on this one at 25 inches. So 20 yards was 10, 30 yards was 17 and a half, and on this 40 yard target it was 25 inches wide. It's almost linear. For every uh, 10 yards we uh, push the target back, the spread increased by seven, seven and a half inches. Now I don't know if that's gonna be typical with all guns or all shells, but in this study it was. Uh, one other thing I wanna note on this one is I was doing a double test, so I actually jogged downhill and uh, try to get my heart rate and my breathing up just a little bit to simulate actually shooting a bird. So you'll notice in the video when I ejected the empty shell and put the other one in, I already had the safety off, okay? So most of the time you need to have the safety on until you're ready to shoot. But I did that to try to simulate a real shooting situation. So on this one, inside the 12 inch, once again, we had 88 pellets or 33% out of the 270. So from 30 to 40, you've got more chance, a better likelihood of hitting a moving bird versus at 20 yards. So that's one of the reasons why it's vitally important to go out there and pattern your shotgun. That way you know what your shotgun can do. And then when the bird does something different, or if it's at a different range 
than what you're anticipating, you know what to expect from your gun as well, and you know what the limitations are. And that way you're not just shooting at something and uh, hoping to hit it. You've got a high confidence level that you are going to uh, make a lethal hit on the bird. That's going to wrap this video up, and we'll probably need to go back in. Maybe we'll target practice a little bit more to see what this pattern, if we can move all this back over and center it. I've got a good idea on what possibly happened in that video. Probably with my left hand gripping the forearm, I was probably pulling the barrel just a little bit to the left. So I'll use more of a relaxed grip, but I think that might correct it. And we'll see you next time. <music>